I've seen two of, I've seen two in my whole life. And there's one sitting right there. All right, let me run you through the story, guys, of finding the uh, amethyst hair streak on this tree. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run you through the last week and a half of, of research that I've been doing. Uh, my boy, Lorenzo, my son, he's 13. He's gotten really into it because we're going to hunt down something that's really, really rare and, and poorly understood. And so, uh, guys, it all started when I um, came to pick up my friend who lives in this apartment complex uh, and, and take her and her son Josh to the airport. And it was late in the afternoon, 6, 6 p.m. I went up this staircase right there to go get her uh, luggage and bring the luggage down for it. And as I looked over, I see on this blooming sea grape tree a Mycetes hair streak, an amethyst hair streak. And the reason I saw that and the reason I was looking was because last year in May, um, on the iNaturalist website, somebody posted a photograph of a amethyst hair streak on the blooms of a sea grape tree. And it looked to be ovipositing. It looked like it was laying eggs. I mean, it was very difficult to tell for sure, but it looked like it was laying eggs, uh, hard to confirm, but you know, we went down there. I didn't see any uh, to the park where they found this hair streak. I didn't see any. We looked around and around and around. Didn't see any. Bit, went there several times. Just whatever reason, missed it. it. We didn't find any of the hair streaks there. Uh, fast forward an entire year. That was 2022. Now it's 2023. My friend Michael Green, who has a YouTube channel called Cool Critters. And you guys want to check out Cool Critters. It's a great channel. He actually texted me and tipped me off that he found my CD's hair streaks. In fact, I'm going to give you a link to his amethyst hair streak video that he did on his channel, probably a couple weeks, published a couple weeks before I found this colony. And he said, Dave, I found them. You should get down there and check it out. So uh, I, I, did, I couldn't go that day, but I came the following day, the very next day, to pick up my friend from front to bring her to the airport and that's when i saw this my cd's hair streak i didn't have a net i didn't have all i had was my phone so i took a short video here's the video clip guys watch this little tiny green butterfly on the sea grape that is a chlorostrymon my cd's it's the rarest butterfly in florida hey. i've seen two oh, see. i've seen two in my whole life and there's one sitting right there. Right there. On sea grape. Well, I'll be coming back here tomorrow with a net. <laughs> and that was the video clip. Uh, that was on a Monday. I came back the very next day uh, after work, brought my extension net, and I was able to uh, collect three female Chlorostrum in my CDs. That was the first time that I'd ever seen a female my CDs in the wild. I've seen not. I take that back. I've seen one female before on Bahia Honda Key way back, and I think that was uh, 2023, 2022. No, 2022. I think it was. That's the last time I saw a female my CDs, and it happened to be on a sea grape tree. I didn't think anything of it. I thought it was just chilling there. Um, but I didn't know it was actually using it as a larval host. So that day caught three. I've caught one male before. I've only ever caught one uh, amethyst hair streak, caught one male uh, in the Florida Keys. It was on a uh, buttonwood tree. Uh, and just, I don't know if it was nectaring. I'm not sure what it was doing. This day I got three. So I had already times, you know, caught more than I ever had times three. And there were all females. All three were females that were caught that day, that afternoon. We kept them, we put them in a container. There's another video on how we got eggs, got them to lay eggs in captivity. And you can check that out as well if you'd like to, it's another video. But uh, it took three or four days for them to lay eggs, but they started laying eggs. They lay eggs really deep, uh, like in between the bud, the flower buds, and where the flower buds connect to the stem of the plant. 
And it, it's very, very difficult to see because they're super, super tiny. They camouflage real well. They're green, just like the stems. And it's very, very challenging because they are very well hidden. That is one talented female butterfly to be able to hide the eggs that well. Uh, we visited this tree three days in a row. We saw two to three individuals each day. They were all females. Is it really gonna rain on me? Should I just keep filming? I'm gonna keep filming. Um, we saw two to three females each day. We probably for a total, like four days in a row, probably a total of 12 or 13 uh, female Mycetes hair streaks all on this tree. And then on the fourth day, I actually caught one. And you know, the, this female Mycetes was on a flower bud. And when I swooped the net and I looked inside, inside of the net was a caterpillar, a full grown caterpillar. We actually got five caterpillars that way by just tapping the tapping the flower blooms and the caterpillars that are feeding on the flower blooms blooms fall off into the net and we were able to actually get final instar caterpillar images that way they've since pupated and now we've got the entire life cycle of the amethyst hair streak fully documented this is the i mean we found these caterpillars in the wild now we didn't those aren't ones that we got eggs from in an artificial environment we got those caterpillars wild feeding caterpillars in the wild that's valuable uh scientific information uh guys now here's the other thing since then we decided we can't let this be the only place that this this is can't be the only place where this thing lives if there's that many of them here there's got to be other sea grape trees where this butterfly lives so my son and i went on a hunt and i actually had taken some time off from work just happened to be off for a couple of days. So we went driving around and we actually found four locations in Pompano uh, on 14th Street at the boat ramp. It's a Pompano City Park. We, there's some sea grape trees there. We've got some, we found some there. There's a, a Wells Fargo bank in East Pompano by the ocean. We found them in a sea grape tree in the parking lot there. In one of the public parking spots for the Pompano uh, Beach, uh, public beach, there's sea grape trees in the parking lot. We found my CDs there. Guys, we found them in four locations and we and we just started. We are so excited because this is this butterfly went from being a total unicorn to being something that's okay, I'm expecting to see them now because now we understand them. They live on the tops of the trees, which makes it really difficult to study them. And that's why being up on that on that you know on that uh, staircase there really helped. It gave us another extra 10 feet of uh, clearance. So uh, guys, that's our journey so far. We're documenting that life cycle. Stay tuned for more videos on the amethyst hair streak. It is starting to rain. So I just wanted to walk you through our journey and give you some cool images of the butterfly, of the egg larva, chrysalis, and the adult. I'm gonna get out of here before it starts to rain. Uh, guys, thanks so much for watching.